All right, today we are starting a new electric project. Now this hub motor I bought right after buying the hub motor we used for the electric dirt bike project. And I want to use this to build an electric mountain bike. Now I bought this mountain bike on Facebook Marketplace. I think I paid like 500 bucks for it. It was the cheapest mountain bike I could find that has decent amount of suspension travel in the front. The frame's not really that great, but we're building a new frame for this thing anyway, so that really doesn't matter. Now, my original plan for this project was gonna be just, I was gonna build like a typical style of electric mountain bike, like the stealth bomber style, but plans have changed because I just, that's boring, I wanna, that's been done a million times, you can buy those things on eBay, so I wanna build something different, I wanna build something cooler than that. And I have figured out a way to solve the unsprung weight issue. Because you guys are right, when you guys were commenting when I was building the electric dirt bike project about this hub motor is a lot of unsprung weight on the back tire. And when you're off-roading, it's really not that great. And it's not. I took, I took the thing off-roading. It's really not that great. It's a lot of weight on the back tire that is unsprung weight. So... I have come up with a plan and an idea on how to solve that issue with this project so where we can still have pedals and the best part, we're going to be hooking this electric motor up to the pedal system of this mountain bike so therefore we can have nine gears with the electric motor. So basically we're converting this from hub motor to mid drive. We're still going to have pedals and this electric motor is going to be hooked up to the nine speed pedal assembly of this electric mountain bike. Yeah, if this works, it'll work awesome, but I just, I'm just i not really sure if if this will work. I, ha I have seen this done before, kind of, but not really this, not, not the way that we're doing it. I have seen this done before on a different kind of bicycle, the one that you kind of lay down on and your feet are in front of you. So I kind of know it works, but I don't think anybody's done this on a mountain bike that still has to where the, the motor is hooked up to the nine speed chain setup and everything to have gears and everything. So now instead of trying to explain what I, how I'm planning on doing this, I'm going to uh, kind of mock it up and then I'll explain it because it's a lot easier to show you guys instead of trying to explain it. change my mind on this project, that'll be fun to put this thing back together. Ooh, it, yeah. That thing's a little heavy. Alright, so I kind of want to just hook this thing up and uh, plug it in and see if it works. I got this thing on the vise. Hopefully it won't. Yeah, hopefully that won't move. Alright, plugging it in, hopefully nothing blows up. Huh. That's not very fast. It's on one. Let's go up to five. So that's the fastest, uh, that's the fastest it can go, but man, it feels like it's got some torque. All right, it works. It doesn't, it doesn't spin very fast, but it works. 
It feel it feels powerful. It just doesn't spin very fast. So. All right. So already we are running into some challenges to get this set up toward them. The main challenge is trying to add pedals. That really makes it a complicated system of everything has to align perfect. These pedals have to clear the motor on each side. Our feet have to clear the what, what are these called? The, the studs that, you know, you use to mount the electric motor. That's creating some issues trying to make it because how, how, we're, how we're doing this is we have to basically take this pedal assembly, flip it around, so therefore this sprocket is on this side, so therefore we can have a chain going from the pedals to the electric motor that has this one-way sprocket thing on this side, so therefore this electric motor can spin, and but the pedals aren't spinning. Then this side's gonna have this sprocket attached to it, then we're gonna have a chain going from this to the rear tire, that is how this whole setup is going to work. But to get this chain to line up on this side, we have to move the motor this way, which isn't going to work because then it's going to be hitting the pedals. The chain is going to be hitting the pedals. So that's just creating some issues. So we're just, get, we're just going to have to make some stuff from scratch to get this setup to work. Now, here's where it pays off to be a hoarder because these are some pedal arms, pedal levers, but I don't know what they're called that are off of a old BMX bike project that I kept in a bin for probably, probably like five or six years now. And these are gonna be perfect to make it to where we can make a new bearing pedal assembly from scratch that is wider, that has a sprocket on this side versus this side. We're also gonna have to put a smaller sprocket on here and we can use these because these attach to the bearing pedal assembly via a hex pattern versus however the heck this, I, I took these apart. These are, um, it's some weird splines that are U-shaped, so I can't really make that from scratch, but we can very easily make uh, hex patterns on our machining equipment, so therefore we can actually use these to build a new pedal assembly that is as wide as we need it, that has the sprocket where we need it. So these are really saving this project, you know, making it to where we can have pedals. So. There are some times where it pays off to be a hoarder. Actually, first thing is let's get this sprocket attached to this side of the motor. This is where the brake disc is supposed to attach to, but uh, we gotta put the sprocket on this side. I'm just gonna cut the rest on the bandsaw. This is taking too long.
I did have to modify this a little bit. I had to grind some spots for these heads to fit onto, otherwise this wouldn't fit. Alright, so now we gotta find the distance between the sprockets, and this was the only, the easiest way I could think of to measure in between this thing. Alright, almost five and a quarter. Alright, we got the, uh, the sprocket mounted onto here, basically just had to make a hub that bolts onto this, that the sprocket bolts onto that. Wasn't that hard. So, and we also have the one-way sprocket on this side, so... Now that we know the distance between these sprockets, which is almost five and a quarter inches, now we know how wide to make the new pedal assembly. I decided to MIG weld it because it's a lot faster. So we got the sprocket attached to the axle. Now I had to put this shoulder on here, so therefore the bearing doesn't contact the heads of these bolts. So yeah, now that now there's plenty of clearance. So next thing we gotta do is we have to machine the hex pattern on this end. And to do that, we're using a 5C collet block and a one inch collet. So I already know the dimension that I need to take off each side, which is 0.133, and that should make it to where this slides on, not super easily, but it should be like a force fit, and then this bolt clamps it onto place. And I will also be drilling and tapping another hole on this end to put a washer on here, just to make sure it doesn't slide off. Once we do that, then we can figure out how long we want to make this thing, cut off the excess, put the other hex on this, pa on this side, and then we gotta make the hub, and this thing should be done.
It's a bit of an interference fit, but we don't want it to easily slide on and off, so. Yeah, I'd say that's perfect. So I've been calculating how wide this thing needs to be, and I figured out that the pedal needs to be, I don't know if you guys can see these marks, but it needs to be right about there. So we just need to cut off like almost three quarters of an inch to get this to size, and then we can, uh, then we can start machining the second hex pattern on this side, and then we also need to make a spacer that's going to go in between here and here that's the same width as this and then that'll determine how wide the hub has to be. So this is the new one compared to the original. This one's not, it's not that much wider. 
I don't know. It's about, I mean, it's about two inches wider, so it may just, it may just feel a little awkward pedaling this thing. All right, both modifications are done to make this work. Now the sprocket is mounted on the hub motor, as well as the new pedal assembly is finished. Now, we still need to get pedals for this thing, but we'll worry about that later. I could take the pedals off of that mountain bike, but I don't, I don't know if it's the size, color, or shape, but those things are just horrid. And I just, I, I don't like them, so I'll, I'll get new ones. So, now as far as the bearings I used for this thing, I was kind of thinking of using the bearings in that pedal assembly, but they're kind of worn out, and it made it a heck of a lot easier to just build this with normal one-inch bearings, so that's what I decided to do. Now, next thing is let's lay this thing out and figure out how we're gonna build this thing and uh, let's take the rear tire off, let's put it on the table, figure out where the pedals are gonna go and figure out where the motor's gonna go and figure out how we're gonna build this thing. One thing I forgot to measure is how high the pedals are. Um, let me put the rear tire back on the bike and I'll measure the distance between the ground and the pedals because that's, that's an important dimension. It's a 13, 13 and 3 quarters, let's just say that. 13 and 3 quarters. I'll admit, this thing is a little heavy. Holy crap. So, we need to figure out how we're building this thing, how we're connecting the tire to the pedals, to the electric motor, to the frame and everything. My original plan was going to be building a custom one-piece swing arm that connects the tire to the pedals to the electric motor that has a pivot point somewhere right here. That way, everything moves kind of in unison. There's no issues of the chains moving around with the suspension and everything kind of just moves together. The downside to that is, uh, when the suspension move is moving up and down for the rear tire, the motor is going to be moving with it, and because the pivot point is in the middle, it's going to kind of be rocking back and forth, which means when the rear suspension collapses, uh, the tires the, or the, uh, the electric motor is going to get really close to the ground, so therefore we have to mount this thing really high so it doesn't hit the ground or hit rocks or anything. We definitely... Definitely don't want this thing hitting rocks, so therefore you have to lift it higher, so it therefore it doesn't hit the ground. That, may, that makes it to where the center of gravity is higher, the battery is higher and everything. So that's, well that was my original plan, and it would be kind of cool to have everything kind of move in unison and have one piece uh, of the swing arm and have the motor connected to that. That would be kind of cool. I don't know, that would be more practical for a on-road bicycle that really doesn't need suspension that much, really doesn't need that much ground clearance. But but because this thing is a mountain bike, and I do want to take this thing mountain bike, mountain bike riding, uh, I think it'd be a better idea if we just connected the pedals and the motor to the main chassis that houses the battery, the, the seat, you know, the front steering and everything. Uh, that way the motor wouldn't be moving with the rear suspension and we can reuse the swing arm off the mountain bike so therefore we don't have to remake the, the dropout points, we don't have to remake mounts for the brakes, the gear selector and everything. We can kind of just use all that stuff off the swing arm and we don't have to make a new swing arm from scratch. All we really got to do is just figure out how we're connecting it to this which isn't that hard. It uses bearings, that's super easy to copy. So the only downside I can really see is because the chain's going from the motor to the rear tire, when the rear tire's moving up and down, the chain's gonna kind of be hitting this. But all I really have to do to fix that is just uh, is just make chain 
guides or something like that, so that's really not that hard. So, yeah, I think this is going to be a lot better setup if we just have this stuff and the motor connected to the main chassis. So let's take the uh, let's take the rear swing arm off the mountain bike and kind of mock it up on here and figure out how we're connecting it onto the pedal system. I just broke that bolt, try to get it out. Yep, it's, so to be able to get this thing off, because the spring won't come off, this bolt's stuck, and it won't go through the frame. Because the spring can't go through the frame this way, it's gotta go through this way, but I can't get the spring off because this bolt is stuck, and I just broke it even worse. And it's just, this thing is like frozen, locked on here. All right, we're resorting to caveman methods because this thing will not come off. This is, this is messed up. This bolt will not come off. Yeah, that was fun. I'll admit, this bike is definitely, it's clapped out. There's a lot of stuff that's broken, a lot of stuff that's really worn out, but it's still a, it's still a work. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot easier just to use the ori or, or, uh, the original swing arm. We don't have to make anything because there's a lot of complicated geometry, a lot of you know moving parts to get this to work and get it lined up perfectly. So it's gonna be a lot easier just reusing this thing. Then we just have to figure out how to do mounts to connect this to this, and then figure out you know where this needs to go and the you know, geometry of all that. So now I would. I would like to build the the frame we're about to build. I would like to build it out of aluminum. That would be the lightest way to do it, but it just takes like two or three times longer to build something like this out of aluminum than it would be to just build it out of steel. And because this is more of a prototype, a test to see if this will work, I'm more tempted just to use steel to build the frame. It's gonna be slightly heavier, but it's gonna be way faster to build it. So let's just Let's just use steel, and if I ever want to build this again, and I know that this will work, maybe next time I can use aluminum, so. All right, so that's the mount we have to make. Now we got the bearing to fit. Now we gotta take some weight off of this thing. It's a little, it's a little thick. It's a little chunky. Let's see how much weight we can shed off of this thing. All right, hopefully this 
this works. Yeah, I'll admit these bearings, they're a bit, uh, they're a bit crunchy, but they probably need replaced. I'll be honest, this whole bike is pretty much like, you know, in really bad shape. This one's not as bad, but it's still not a smooth bearing. This one's just, this one's pretty bad. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's put this thing together. All right, I had to take even more thickness off of this. Basically, when you put the bearing in, there's spacer that goes in here, but this was too thick and that spacer wasn't sticking out far enough. So I had to take 70 thou off of this side. So it's even, even smaller, even lighter. So also this bearing will not come off. This, uh, this bolt, I tried hammering it. I tried using rust release penetrant it is stuck on there and I don't want to break it getting off getting it off so we'll just get we're just gonna leave it on there Yeah, after 20 minutes of figuring out the angle, lining it up perfectly, making sure it's all level. Yeah, look at that. Perfect. So I'm kind of wishing that I, before disassembling the mountain bike, I wish I wrote down dimensions of like the angle of this and this, the dimensions of the distance, the angle of this, how high is this, where's the, you know, where's the shot go and all that. I kind of wish I wrote down dimensions or at least like pictures of it or something. I mean, I guess I could just reassemble it back on the frame and uh, just then take dimensions. So I may, I may have to do that because when you're trying to copy something, it's a little important to have the dimensions of the thing you're trying to copy. So I'll admit, I, was, I, I think I already said this, but I'm ki I kind of wish I didn't cheat because this was the cheapest mountain bike I could find on Facebook Marketplace at the time of, because I bought this mountain bike the same kind of couple of weeks after buying this hub motor because I was planning on building some type of electric mountain bike and I, I didn't really care about like the condition of it because I had a completely different plan. All I was pretty much doing was uh, using the front forks and the handlebars and that's it. I wanted to replace everything else with different components but then plans changed and now I'm using way more of the mountain bike than I thought I was going to so yeah, it's, I wish it was in better condition because the bearings are super crunchy this bolt right here, it I, yeah, I could not get it out. It I think it's I think it's bent. So either we're gonna have to. I, I already and also I broke it. So there's no way we can get it out without cutting it out. So we're, I'm gonna have to cut it out, make a new one, or because yeah, I, I don't know if I can find one because it's some super special lightweight bolt. So I may just make one. Also, the brakes are really bad. It definitely needs new brake pads. The, the they're hydraulic, but they have zero pressure to them, so they need bleeding as well as one of the brake lines is kind of kinked, so I don't know if I need new brake lines. Also, the gear selector is really messed up and bent. Also, I may need new sprockets on the rear tire because they're really worn. This bike was uh, 
It was really, it, it, it was ridden hard, let's just say that. It was used and abused, and I wish I'd bought a better one, I guess, I don't know. But I wasn't planning originally on using this much of this mountain bike for this project, but plans have changed, and now I'm trying to use as much as possible, and uh, yeah, I'm kind of regretting that decision because it's, it's beat up. Anyway, anyway, so... Also, there's the huge question of whether or not this will actually work. I don't know. I don't know if I already said this yet, but there's. I mean, is a bicycle tire this bi these really thin bicycle spokes? Is a bicycle chain and bicycle sprockets going to be able to handle the torque of this electric bike? Because we saw this thing spin up. It's not very fast, but it, you can feel it has a ton of torque. And I'm not even sure if bicycle chain and sprockets is going to even be able to handle the torque of this motor. So this is all just a giant experiment to see if this will work. So I, I've been wanting to do something like this for kind of a while that still had the gears because I really want the gears between the electric motor and the tire. That's what makes this so great. Uh, but it's a huge question on whether or not this chain and sprockets and the spokes of this rear tire is going to be able to handle uh, the torque of this thing. So Now, I know some of you guys are going to comment that it's like, oh, it's electric, it doesn't need gears, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to be so much better with gears because if you think about it, these electric motors, when they're a hub motor, they can, they're really not that powerful and you, there's only a set speed that you can go unless you go the super high-end very powerful electric motors, which this is not. So, but if you have gears, you can go way faster than this motor could ever go, and you can have way more torque for hill climbs and all that kind of stuff. And the gearing that I chose between the electric motor and the rear tire, because this is a nine speed uh, rear tire and fifth gear is basically right in the middle, I made it to where fifth gear is one to one with the electric motor. So basically, we have four gears going faster and four gears going slower, and we can always play around with that gearing if we want to, put a bigger sprocket on this to go faster and everything. So, yeah. I I'm excited about this thing. I, I really am curious if this will work and how well will it work. Also, the huge benefit of making this sprung weight versus unsprung weight. Also, I did weigh this. I know I'm rambling, but I don't care. I weighed the electric motor and the battery and they weigh together 75 pounds, which uh, most of that is in the motor, and I, the controller weighs an extra, like, I think, like five pounds. So with me, the motor, and the electric battery, it's gonna be a total of 225 pounds. Uh, basically, just gonna be a 225 pound rider riding this thing, so I'm hoping the suspension on this bicycle will be able to handle that and not bottom out, but this is adjustable and I can put more air in the front forks to hold more weight, which we're definitely gonna need that, so. Anyway, next video is we're just gonna continue on the frame. We need to figure out the dimension of where this goes, the heights and everything, figure out where the seat's gonna go, the battery, mount the motor, figure out how tall, because we definitely don't wanna have this thing super high off the ground, but also, we want to make sure that when the suspension collapses, this isn't really, really close to the ground. It's potentially smashed into a rock or something. So we got to figure out the height that we want this thing, as well as you know the the layout of this the whole thing. But uh, anyway, guess that's it for this video. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see you in the next video.